A very good morning to you. Welcome back. And of course, if you're just joining us, thank you for uh, making the time to do so. Time now for us to dig into the newspapers. Yes, it's time for the news review. We are joined by Bobby Banson, a lawyer. I'm stopping myself from saying social commentator. Good morning, Bobby. <laughs> you would have to unmute, Bobby. Hey. If, if, if you put me in that bracket, the general legal counsel will summon me, ask me if I've started another profession. <laughs> well, technically, I mean, it's, it's not a role, so to speak, but you comment on social issues. And uh, I was just trying to find a better way of saying that. But it's really good having you on. And let me do Maybe this you publicly. I'm being, I'm being a citizen, not a spectator. You're being a citizen, not a spectator. Right. So maybe we should call you <laughs> Citizen Bobby. <laughs> or citizen Banson. Maybe. Which which one do you want? I, I would I would like the citizen Bobby. <laughs> All right, citizen Bobby, it is. Uh, henceforth, I'm noting it down, citizen Bobby. And in further interactions, I'll try to uh, recall. Uh, I lest I forget, I just had to say this. It, it was really nice of you. I know you probably don't want me to say this on TV, but that latest book that Bobby Banson has put together on civil litigation. He was gracious enough to give me a hard copy for free. And I really appreciate what you wrote in there. Um, hopefully the book <laughs> inspires me to complete what I started. For those who know, they will understand. So Bobby, thank you so much. Thank you. You're most welcome, Ben. All right. So let's get into some quick stories from the papers. But before that, I'm sure you've heard of the minority uh, in parliament, the minority leader, Haruna Idrisu, who is saying, look, for those ministers of state, who absent themselves during the debate of the budget and you know budgets for their ministries as well. You keep doing that, we will not approve the budget for your specific ministries. Especially on the back of what has happened when it comes to uh, some members of parliament flying to different places, some to Qatar, others simply being absent. 100, 150, all of them absent uh, from parliament, even while the debate was, uh, the budget was being debated. Uh, the question is, is this the way to go to whip these ministers in line? Well, I, I, I believe it's long overdue. Um, like I keep saying, or like I've said before, we keep hearing these threats um, from either side of the divide um, to crack the whip when ministers um, fail to appear before them or parliamentarians fail to be present during debates on such important matters. I just hope that uh, we would have the minority or the parliament as a whole carry out these threats um, just to ensure that parliamentarians take their work seriously in, in this regard. Mm. And inflation is up again. It's another conversation we're having today. 50.3%. Uh, it appears, I don't know when it's going to slow down, especially now that it's crossed uh, 50%. Quick, quick reactions uh, to that. It's interesting, though. I, I have done this. I don't know whether you've, you've bothered to do so. My monthly salary, uh, you know, I, I, at least I have a few other things that, thanks be to God, sometimes rake in or bring in a revenue. But my monthly salary, right, I, I worked out inflation on it. And Bobby, I didn't like what I saw. Now it's going to be even worse. What's your take? Well, it's, um, it's a very interesting scenario. I, I mean, I'm not an expert in these statistics. How no, they no, work, no, no, no. I want um, you to speak about it from how you feel it, what you see of it. Yes. We've not seen this in the Fourth Republic, just from your own. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, it's obvious it's the first time, but it's obvious the... Uh, economics um, would tell you that they think that it's external influence. They keep blaming the Ukraine-Russian war as we have it for the cause of the inflation. I have had the benefit of experiencing the cost of um, items outside the jurisdiction, outside Ghana within this period. And I must admit that it's not akin to only, it's not um, 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 limited to only Ghana. A host of countries where those we think have a um, proper um, 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 systems are also experiencing these inflations. I, what, what intrigues me is that, you know, normally we would say, okay, so the price of fuel goes up, uh, price of things, transport goes up automatically. It affects um, the price of goods and services. 
Um, those that import say that because they exchange more dollars to to buy, sorry, they exchange more CDs to buy dollars, then when they import, the cost also increases. And so it affects the price of um, goods that are imported. Where, and we know that in our market, majority of goods that we have here are imported. But in the past weeks, two or so weeks, we are experiencing a, a, a very huge appreciation of the CD against the dollar. So I think, or I'm expecting from my lay perspective, that it's only a matter of time that the inflation rates may come down, even if it's marginally or stabilized to help planning. Other than that, at this rate, um, and if the salaries are the same as we have it, uh, then there'll be a problem despite, you know, all these external factors, the dollar, the fuel prices we are seeing coming down. And so I, I want to see how it will go in, in January. We know that normally in December, prices of items shoot up normally, but a dollar even goes up, but we don't know how or the magic that is happening that it's reducing now. So I want to see how it will pan up in January and February particularly to see if it's actually the external influences that they keep telling us, or it is just that the fundamentals are indeed very, very weak. Well, that's something that we'll be looking forward to. Definitely, if things become better, they become better for us all. But interestingly, inflation has been going up for about 18 months now, without a break, about 18 months. That's about a year and a half. Okay, so, and especially the hope was that by close of year, it would have started to slow down a little, shown some signs. But when you look at what we experienced last, you know, the last time we saw an inflationary figure, which was for October, this inflationary figure is actually for November, then you see that it's really problematic. What I'll wait to see is the inflationary figure, figure for December. Then I'll be able to make my, my own, you know, deductions uh, from there. But thanks for, for your thoughts on that. Let's get into the Daily Guide newspaper. Approve Kumsin Gaiwu for Supreme Court. That's according uh, to the committee. We know about the two uh, who were approved recently. Well, I'll be going to that story on page three. But the banner headline, Stop Begging, Let's Make Africa Great. And I have an interesting take on that as well. Don't compromise uh, on human rights, that's according to the Attorney General, and reserve 30% of parliamentary seats for women. Uh, while, and this is a former lecturer of mine, Dr. Mame Adwa Jechijando, former head of the political science department as well at the University of Ghana. While I agree with her that there should be some mechanisms to ensure that women participate more in, in parliament, I'm wondering whether some reservation of seats is, is what is the way to go and, and how that would impact, you know, the voting public. But let's start with the story about making Africa great. President Okofuado has asked African leaders to find ways of putting an end to the habit of constantly begging for aid, but rather implement policies that create opportunities for citizens and improve their lives. He said this had become critical because the perception of the continent from the diaspora had often been that of disease, hunger, poverty, and illegal mass migration. According to him, the time had come for the diasporan community to help change the often skewed and negative perception about Africa. The president, who was speaking at the Young African and Diasporan Leaders Summit held on the sidelines of the U.S. Africa Leaders Summit in Washington, D.C. on Tuesday, said, quote, The urgent responsibility we face is to make our countries and our continent attractive for our people to see them as places of opportunity. I agree with the president. We should do that. We should make the continent a place of opportunity to, so that the teeming youth, the masses, in fact, the projections are that by 2050, there'll be so many more young people, over 50% of Africa's population will be young people, youth. But you look at the continent and like Mo Ibrahim, the, the British Sudanese billionaire will ask, where is the continent headed? Look at our leadership in, in um, what's, what's its name? Is it Equatorial Guinea? Their president is, is, what, having a sixth term. He's the longest serving president in the world. Dude can barely walk, I'm sorry. We saw that situation in North Africa where a president was in a wheelchair, still wanted to go on. I always say this, I am not engaging in ageism, but 
we need fresh thinking. KSM was on my show the other day and said that, look, a lot of our leaders are analog. They are not digital. They are not thinking along with our current world and its dynamics. But, but right before you come in, Bobby, so on that beat, why, and I just want you to share your thoughts and then I'll not go back to it. Why I have some concerns. I noticed that when we're talking about our staff level agreement with the IMF, we had in there uh, Ghana Beyond Aid. Ghana Beyond, beyond Witting. Ghana Beyond Aid and we're still, it's not to say any country will go beyond aid fully, but even the impact of the optics of it, Ghana Beyond Aid, and we're going to borrow from the IMF even as the president says, we should make Africa great again. Over to you, Bobby. Well, um, Africa is, is a great continent. Um, we have always been great. I, I always say that it's purely a matter of leadership. Um, our leaders um, are not, or the leaders of the countries that are doing better, in our opinion, are not better than our leaders here. We have examples of leaders who are doing better than other leaders in the West, leaders in Africa, who are doing better than leaders in the West. Some example, definitely are, a few of them. Yes, for example, the president of Tanzania, the woman, um, I read that she cancelled the celebration yes. of their Independence Day yes. this year and decided to use the money that had been allocated for it to building schools or doing something in certain villages. $445,000 is what they saved. And they were going to use them to build dormitories for deprived communities. That's what they did. Yes. And, and if you look at leaders like this on the African continent and what they are doing, and you ask yourself why are, it's not an issue of the, the location of that leader, whether the leader is in Africa or where the leader is, Africa is great. I do not follow the narrative that we need to make Africa great again. No, I think that we are, we are great. We only need to have right leaders. And then, I mean, look at the forum where we go and say, don't stop begging. I don't believe that it was said during a summit of African leaders in Africa, was it? So this was in Washington, D.C. Exactly. So the, 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 you are there... They have invited you to come and discuss how to collaborate to, to build your continent. And we know that they don't give or they don't collaborate for free. They always ask for things in return. And throughout history, the countries that have stood up against some of these so-called aids in exchange for a certain level of influence have always, always in the long term ended up being better. I think it's only a matter of the leaders leading us in such a way that we understand the need to sacrifice in the short to medium term for us to benefit as a continent or as countries, African countries, in the long term. Majority of the natural resources are found here in Africa. What we need are the human resources. It's not the first time that we've had our president or president from the African continent, for that matter, going to say stop begging or we will stop begging we still go to imf to literally do what to come and tell them that we cannot manage our economy come and help us manage it or guide us to give us some level of integrity so we can go back and borrow and borrow to do what borrow to invest in projects that will not yield any financial returns directly employment wise or things that will not benefit us in the long run and so it's purely a matter of leadership. It's not enough to say, let's stop borrowing when we come back home and do exactly the reverse of what we've been preaching about. And it's, 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 it's disheartening because when you travel to countries where you do not think that the people there should have more resources than us, but you see Africans educated, some as high as having university degrees, doing jobs that they will not do when they are in Ghana, and then you ask yourself, where are we headed? Because if the country would spend money on these persons to educate them, and they will leave to go, for example, without disrespecting those that do that job, to go do, for example, cleaning jobs in Middle East countries, or security jobs in Middle East countries, and they tell you, well, what we earn here 
or the security of our retirement, the pension, is much more than what we will have back home, then you ask yourself, where are we going to? So we should stop beg telling us we will not beg and start doing things that in the long term will benefit all of us instead of only thinking of the short term. That is the problem with our leaders, only thinking of elections, what we will do in the short term, how to expend the natural resources, without investing on putting together a solid long-term plan that we would abide by, or the whole country, irrespective of your political affiliation, would follow through. Look at countries like Singapore, like Malaysia. These are countries that started like Ghana or most of African countries. And where are they now? They all tell you it's about leadership. Listen, Qatar that we are hailing, the, all the infrastructure we are seeing are less than 15 years old, Ben. If you go there, all the roads, all the things that we are seeing that has put them in a position to host the World Cup are less than 15 years old. It is not that they have more natural resources than us. We say they have oil, they have oil. We have been mining gold here for 3,000 years. We've mm. had cocoa for us, I mean, for how many years? Hundreds of years. They did not discover the oil the time we discovered our gold. And so why are they where they are? What have they done with their resources? So I believe that our problem is human resources, leadership, and not natural resources. Otherwise, we'll keep going back. We go to Switzerland, they don't have one cocoa plant. But they have all the chocolates in the world. Yeah. And we are still doing it. Mm. So we can sit here and say, we won't beg, we won't beg. What are we actually doing to prevent us from begging? It's Look at Kigali, mm. Rwanda, what the president has done. We said that, well, it's not democracy, but what has he done with the power that has been given to him? There is a book, The Men That Robbed Africa. Ben, you should read it. It's this heartening. The kind of leaders we have had over time, and they come back to say, let's stop begging. Let's stop begging. Yeah. Meanwhile, they're doing the very things that will not only let us, this current generation, beg, but future generations beg. They go for loans that will be paid in 20 years by their children's children. So they are setting the foundation for them to come and beg. Exactly why I am frustrated with this kind of rhetoric, because honestly, this rhetoric means nothing, absolutely nothing to someone like me. How, how long have we been saying Ghana beyond aid, Ghana beyond waiting? Anyway, uh, let's get into other stories. Uh, so, page three, there's also a proof Kumsin. I'll blaze through them. We have just about six minutes before you leave us. A proof Kumsin Gaiwu uh, for Supreme Court. That's according to the Committee of Parliament. Uh, the Appointments Committee, by majority decision, has recommended to the House the approval of the nomination of Justice Ernest Yao Gao and Justice George Kingsley Kumsin for appointment as judges to the Supreme Court. Uh, the two were among four nominees considered by the committee as justices to the Supreme Court pursuant to Article 1284 of our Constitution. Of course, initially, uh, we had had the approvals for Justices Barbara Francis Akayensu and Samuel Kwame Adibu Asiedu for appointment. Uh, I'll, I'll get your take on that. There's also the bit about uh, reserving 30% parliamentary seats for women and uh, Commissions, that's the Constitutional Review Commission, has been charged to consider a quota system in any future review process by reserving 30% of seats for women in Parliament. A former head of the Political Science Department at the University of Ghana, Dr. Mame Adwa Jechijando, who said this when she addressed participants at the Professor Michael Quay Center for Constitutional Studies at the Institute of Economic Affairs in Accra, said such a move would lead to active and increased participation of women in politics. Quick, quick, quick reactions to these two stories. Well, I, 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 I have had the privilege of appearing uh, before the two judges, Justice Kumsin and Justice Gayu, And I have no doubt that if they are given the opportunity, um, they would do their best to expand the frontiers of the law or discharge uh, justice, dispense justice to the best of their ability. And I wish them the very best in, in, in this, in this regard. Um, as to the reservation of seats for women, you know, then I think that as a society, we should go past some of these, for lack of a better word, demands. Um, we, we are, we are uh, for me, I, I think we should focus on reserving admission into, um, or, or encouraging, not reservation, encouraging or putting 
together systems that would encourage all levels of all persons, no matter of the gender, which is in our constitution anyway, access to our educational system. Oh, it appears we've lost the feed of Bobby Bamson. When, when he returns, we'll continue the conversation from there. Bo Bobby, can you hear me? All right, the, the connection is still poor. We'll try to work on that. But let's get into the business, find a newspaper now. Or maybe let me just wrap with that story. I would have brought it to Bobby, but since he's not on, I'll just take a quick look at it before we move on. And it says, don't compromise on human rights. That's according to the Attorney General uh, and Minister of Justice, Godfrey Yabwadami, who has called for more efforts towards the promotion of human rights uh, issues in Ghana to create a viable environment for citizens. According to him, Ghana has come far in the fight for the protection of human rights and freedoms, but we ought not to be complacent, but aspire to achieve more in order to make Ghana the most sought after place to be in the entire world. That's a positive ambition. Hopefully we get there. The business finder now, make Africa the place for investment. Pr President urges African diasporans. We brought you snippets of that in the news and uh, in that story uh, talking about aid uh, from the initial paper we looked at. Youth Voices chapter must be truly representative and limestone rich cobalt communities deprived of development. You know, this is one of the the, the things that irks me when I read such stories. You would find that there are communities where we're getting oil, we're getting gold, we're getting diamonds, we're getting so many resources, and yet you look at the communities. Look at Obwase, look at Takwa, look at Akwetia, look at these mining communities. And I mean, along the Bogosu Lane in the Western region. Yet, look at them. Look at those communities. Sometimes they even struggle with hospital facilities. Look at their roads. Look at the infrastructure. I don't get our country. Oh. I don't get Ghana. Ghana doesn't make any sense to me. Honestly, in this fourth republic, our leaders, NDC and MPP, sometimes I struggle. I look at the country. Maybe I have my biases because I've lived in other parts of the world. I've seen what other people have done with scarce resources, scarce resources. And I look back at my own country with everything we have, the boons, the blessings, the bounty. And yet we are poor as church mouses. I was looking the other day, I was asking myself, you know, countries like South Korea and the rest, they, when, when they grow, when they develop, when they industrialize, there's a spin-off. So it creates millionaires and billionaires. Ghana doesn't even have a Forbes certified billionaire, not to talk, even millionaires. We, we don't really have those Forbes certified, very few. And that could be the spin-off because once your economy is buoyant, it, it creates the dangotes and the others. But here we are, even those who have something, most of them using illicit means. So no one even knows what this person has or it's just a shambolic system we have here. Uh, let's take a quick look at um, some other stories in uh, the paper. Let me just check out uh, one or two more stories. So there's an analysis here, something that resonates with. Who was it that was saying that in recent times? I think it was Dr. Saad Idrisu, an economist who was saying, or is it Professor, that we should be very careful how we spend during the season because next year is going to be hard, especially at the start of the year. And January already is very hard. And January is like three months put together. So we all ought to watch it this month. Don't overdo it because next year, uh, looking at how turbulent everything is, you don't know how things could go. But there's an analysis there. Christmas, Prudent Expenditure, Please, Part 1. It's by Dr. Kofi Amponsin. Uh, and there's also Budget 2023, CSO Forum Lords Government on Critical Minerals Development. And finally, leadership is about responsibility. John Dramani Mahama, former president, says so. Do we have Bobby Banson back? All right, so let's get into some other stories as we wrap the conversation. The Chronicle this morning says transport fares to go down. Minister Siama hints as House approves ministry's budget estimates. There's also Reverend Ousu Bempa left off the hook. 
And Africans in diaspora must help change African narrative. That's according to the president. And pensioner who slapped Accra commando granted bail. That's the great Accra regional minister being referred to here. But there's a quote, as always, like you would find in the Chronicle newspaper. Psalms 118 verse 5. Out of my distress, I called on the Lord. The Lord answered me and set me free. And of course, I'm sure that ties into the story about Reverend Ousu Bempa, who has been let off the hook. All right. I mistakenly read the wrong thing because the paper put the wrong thing there, left off the hook. Anyway, so let's get into the stories. Uh, we'll start with the one on page two. Um, yeah, page three, actually. So the Minister for Transport, Mr. Kweku Ofuria Siyama, has indicated that commuters will soon see some reduction in their transport fares. According to him, his ministry has started a closed-door meeting or started closed-door meetings with transport operators and assured that there will be some reductions at the end of these meetings. Quote, we have sat down with the transport operators. We need to go through some processes to make sure that the market survey that we have done justifies the decision that we are going to take. We have gone through the processes. We are meeting again tomorrow, that is today, but I can assure the minority chief whip that the transport operators will do something about it. I think in times of difficulties, they have been with us and I am sure they will not disappoint us this time. They will indeed come out and do some reduction in transport fares. That's according to uh, the minister. He made this known on the floor of parliament while calling on members of parliament to approve a sum of 1.2 billion Ghana CDs uh, for the ministry. Yeah, so that is it for that story. There's also Reverend Usu Bempa left or let off the hook and the Accra Circuit Court 8 presided over by Rosemary Ba Tosu has struck out a case brought against Reverend Isaac Usu Bempa and the three others uh, as withdrawn. The case was struck out yesterday by the court after it was informed by the prosecution officer Inspector Jonas Lawe that the state was formally withdrawing the charges against the Reverend Minister and the others. The others were Michael Watting, Frederick Ohene and Nathaniel Ejakum. However, no specific reason was given by the state. You see, this is an interesting case that I would have wanted to run by Bobby Banson. Now, hitherto, all the accused persons pleaded not guilty to four charges brought against them, including causing unlawful harm. They were put before the court in September 2021 and admitted to bail in the sum of 100,000 Ghana cities with one surety each and were ordered to avail themselves to the police whenever required. Prior to the case being struck out, it was adjourned sine die on June the 8th, 2022, as both counsel and prosecution were present. So what is the background to this case? It was brought against the accused persons by police personnel stationed at the intelligence unit of the Ghana Police Service at police headquarters. Reverend Ousu Bempa is the general overseer of Glorious Word Power Ministry International, while the other others are members of his church. The court was told that on September 9, the first accused and some members of his church, including one Mensah for a associate pastor of the church, besieged the premises of evangelist Patricia Odro Kranting, alias Nanagrada, and threatened to kill her, which went viral on social media. So that is the genesis to this case. I ask myself, it appears there are so many tin gods, uh, people who get away with so many things. I've had my own uh, rejection and disapproval of the handling of the Atuessian uh, case. I feel it sets a bad precedent and I agree with Justice Bafo on the tenor, the example, or should I say poor example it sets. My seniors, Godfrey Abu Adame and... Um, I forget his name. Tuya Yabwa, I know, will disagree with me. I'm entitled to my opinion. Uh, and, and with some of these political elements, a reverend, so to speak, but of course we all know where they lie on the political spectrum. I feel this, this sort of charade and in a way nonsense must stop. Whether the person is affiliated to the NDC or the MPP, you double it. This is not the first time. Remember that incident at a media entity? Remember that? storming the place, people with guns and all. I mean, how did we end here? And these people do these things with impunity. And every time they get away, they get away with it. 
Anyway, so that's it for this paper. Let's do the new crusading guide now. U.S. Partnership Opportunity Delegation to Visit Ghana. There's apologize to Supreme Court judges, Afa to Asiedu Nketia, Mahama, and the NDC. Now, this is another interesting story. Uh, it's also, I'll check out the page. There's foreign companies must retain profits in Ghana to sustain current stabilization of the city. That's an MPP MP. Well, Mr. MP, it's not just talk uh, that you will use to stabilize the city. And you cannot compel these companies to do some of these things. We have created systems over time. And for six years, your administration, Mr. MP, has fomented saying, so the talk is cheap. Let's act if we want to see uh, better. We, our CD will continue to flip-flop if we don't put the right measures in place. And yesterday when I was joined by um, Dr. Um, Sticker, the member of parliament for NCIA, uh, so Dr. Stephen Amwa, he made mention of some dynamics in our economy that simply, so to speak, don't make sense. Once we retain them like that, there's not going to be any change. Our CD is going to remain weak because the, the, the fundamentals of our economy are weak. So the least shock elsewhere, you see us running helter-skelter. Our currency will be floundering. And it's the ordinary man, the ordinary Kojo, the ordinary Amma, who will suffer the most. Well, let's get into those stories now. Apologize to Supreme Court uh, judges. Afa to Asiedun Ketia Mahama and the NDC. Now the Alliance for Foot Soldiers Advocacy. Imagine that. Foot soldiers says it is alarmed by the content of a leaked audio tape alleged to be the voice of NDC General Secretary Johnson Esiedunketia. A statement signed by the Executive Secretary of the Alliance, Sir Obama, uh, said, quote, In the said audio, which has since gone viral, the outgoing chief scribe and national chairman hopeful of the opposition NDC is heard admitting, among other things, that his party, the NDC, was and able to collate its results during the 2020 general elections due to an internal IT system breakdown. As if that weren't enough, Asiye Dunketia also uh, disclosed that the evidence his party sought to rely upon in challenging the valid validity of the election of President Akufuado at the Supreme Court in 2021 was utterly useless, inadmissible, and same could not have overturned the outcome of the electoral results. And for that reason, they are calling on him to apologize. I don't know about, uh, I've listened to what uh, he said in that purported tape, and he has come out uh, to speak on it. He himself did not say it was useless, inadmissible, and so on. But uh, it raises some concerns for me about uh, if, if that knowledge did exist, and if Asiye Dunketia is now admitting that, then why really did they put us through that entire, you know, shambolic, turmoil-ridden event? I am saying that, yes, we should trust uh, the court process and we should test the law as and when needed. But if this, in fact, turns out to be what he said, and if that knowledge was available, and if they admitted their failings, why did they have to put us through all of that? My question to them. Uh, there's also GBA must investigate and sanction NDC lawyers over Siedun Ketia's leaked tape. That's according to the MPP's Richard Ehiagba, or Ahiagba, I should say. And chiefs cautioned against Galamse double sale of Land. The final paper, Newsday, says almost all plastic waste generated in Ghana finds its way into the sea. There's also more labor unrest looms over debt exchange program. Professor Jampo hints he's been speaking, sharing thoughts on social media. And go for oil deal, long overdue, MNC uh, group chairman. But let me just do this. Tied to the almost all plastic waste generated in Ghana finds its way into the seabed on page four. There is a G-Step team and GasMet which are converting plastic waste into fuel. And the Ghana Science and Technology Explorer Prize is a project intended to promote STEM education among junior high schools. And guess what? Both of them are working and converting plastic waste into fuel. And that is an exciting bit that I felt I had to highlight. Right before I go, a very happy birthday to Rosemary Lamte of SEPS 
Avianz Airport, uh, Rosemary Lamte of Seps. May the good Lord bless and lift you high. It's from Miranda Ayoko Adams and the entire family. Happy birthday to you, uh, Rosemary. There's also uh, this one. Let me quickly get that. Oh, my word. Where did you go? Where did you go? Where did you go? Okay, so I'll find it later and acknowledge. Yes, so there's Marvin. Uh, it's actually tomorrow. That is your birthday. So maybe I'm in haste. Happy birthday in advance, uh, Marvin, and continue being the wonderful person you are. On that note, sports is up next. And yesterday, it was a mixed feeling for me because while I wanted Morocco to do the ultimate, I somehow knew deep within my bones that the French, Les Bleus, had more discipline to get it done. And they did. Now we have a mouth-watering final clash in the Mondial. France, Argentina. I'm tipping France to win the World Cup back-to-back. -back. But will it happen? More in sports.